Greetings, travelers, and welcome to episode 58 of Westeros Craft Walks with your triumphant host, Dutch Guard. In today's episode, we'll be checking out Ghost Hill, the seat of House Toland in Dorne. I've just awoken aboard this sailing vessel, having hidden away in the bowels of the ship. I shall slowly creep my way out onto the top deck, and here we are in the heat of the Dornish sun. Um, we're here at Ghost Hill, which is located on the northern coast of the Arm of Dorne. Uh, it's a very sandy, deserty, warm, hot, dry place, and uh, I'm sweating just talking about it. Um, so you might have known it's been a been a while since I've uh, released a new video, and that's because I've been enjoying the beautiful English summer. Um, so please do forgive me, but as always, I will return and bring you more great content from this most excellent server. So, without further ado, let's continue on our way, let's hop off the ship, and walk our way around the harbor to the castle of Ghost Hill. But before that, we're going to check out the town, and some of the uh, cool features it has to offer us. Uh, out here, we've got what looks like a lighthouse, or an outpost of some sort, so we can go check that out as well. Let's just hop over the terrain here, and... Uh, have a look inside. Um, Ghost Hill is named for its ghostly white walls, which is also featured on the castle, but it looks like the town has used these same materials. So we're seeing lots of white stone here, and a sort of white plaster, which I think looks great. And it's known to sort of reflect off of the, uh, the sea to create these magical blue shades uh, across the town. Um, I don't think there's stairs in this lower level, so I'm going to have to come back out here and see... Ah, just around this way. Um, so yes, other than that, we don't really know very much about Ghost Hill. We've got a little bit of history um, about an old Lord Toland during um, the War of the Conquest, during Aegon's Conquest, um, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Oops, standing in the potty. Um, um, but other than that, it's just a really cool atmospheric build with a really unique palette, um, which was completed actually quite a while ago. It's a build I've been meaning to uh, video and document for quite some time. Here you can look out onto this very impressive natural harbor. You can see the stone sort of clawing in this little bit of water, um, and all these really cool Dorna ships. I guess I'm seeing some... Um, some Tyrell colors over there, uh, maybe a, a Baratheon ship as well, some black and yellow over there. Um, so we've got some of the smaller docks here, which is where that ship was that we came off of, and on the other side some of the larger uh, docks for more of the larger galleys and uh, carracks and things like that. Um, right, so we're going to head back down out of here and start to check out more of the town's features. So we're just going to walk along this dusty rock road and uh, head into that town. So that big square building you can see um, is a caravanserai, which is sort of like, I think I've said it before in one of my previous Dornish, Dornish videos, is sort of like a, um, a motel. <laughs> a motel for people um, riding across the deserts of Dorne, a place to relax and rehydrate. And um, they're usually built quite splendorifously. Um, I just made up that word. Um, but uh, you can see, you know, it's got these beautiful arches and this beautiful white plaster and those um, blue uh, shutters, window shutters, and of course the Dornish domes, which here in Ghost Hill are made of that sort of blue copper, uh, sort of rusted brass kind of look, which is pretty cool. Quite like that. We've got some fish here roasting over an open fire. We've got some more little townhouses here along the harbor, probably some fishermen or some, uh, yeah, it looks like some fishermen uh, working here. We've got a little stall here selling fish. Um, pretty simple style. I quite like it. I like when we sort of focus more on the textures we're using rather than sort of adding as much detail as possible into every little nook and cranny of a build, um, which is what I think generally Dorne tends to be. It's lots of square angles and kind of square houses, but um, the detail comes in the actual texturing of the, of the individual blocks, which is uh, my kind of preferred style of building. I think it's more interesting and slightly more realistic than, you know, adding a bunch of random blocks to the outside of a building just to make it look interesting. Um, so cool, that's kind of your average interior decorations here. We've got lots of floor cushions for the Dornish. Um, not too many chairs, which I think is kind of cool. It is described as there being like, you know, pillows scattered everywhere all over the floors in Dorne uh, and in Sunspear especially, so we've sort of continued that throughout Dorne, which I think is a pretty cool, unique look. Of course, Dorne is a very different culture to the west rest of Westeros because they resisted uh, the Targaryens for so long and um, they're descended from a completely different culture than the rest of the continent. 
Um, and which is why, you know, Dorne is one of my favorite places. It's just so different. Everything is... It's like a whole different world. Um, and so different from what we're used to reading about and seeing in uh, the TV series and the book series. Because we don't actually get uh, a lot of point of view stories told uh, from Dorne. We get a little bit here and there, but not all that much. Um, so finally, uh, on our server, you get to see kind of what it looks like. Up there, we've got the Castle of Ghost Hill, which we'll go up to in just a minute after we check out some more of these houses here. I do want to get into that caravanserai if I can find it again. I think it's just back there. It's a pretty sizable town, actually. Now, there aren't really that many big towns in uh, Dorne, Sunspear probably being the biggest one. Mostly, it's just castles and keeps dotted here and there. Oh yeah, here's something really cool as well I want to show you. We've got a red temple here in Ghost Hill. Uh, a temple of Rolor, the uh, red god, or the fire god, if you will. Um, if you're familiar with Relis uh, Relisandra, Melisandra, uh, this is her religion. So they do sort of have these little churches. We know they have sort of churches and temples uh, because of uh, what we hear about in Bravos. Um, so, uh, yeah, we thought there must be some in Westeros somewhere, you know, especially in Dorne, where I think they're more accepting of, of foreign cultures, cultures from Essos. Of course, we have no idea what these things really look like from the inside. So it looks like we've just got a big fire and lots of banners of the Red God. We've got that flaming heart there, which is sort of their sigil, if you will. Um, let's just head up this tower just to see what's up here. We're using all this red plaster, which I think is really cool. And it just makes the building really stand out. Uh, from the rest of Ghost Hill. Very cool. Right, let's jump out of here. Boop! And into this little market, which is pretty cool. We've got lots of little markets around Dorne, selling all kinds of exotic fruits and vegetables. Those look like hops or lettuce or something. These look like oranges or lemons or clementines, what have you. Um, so, yeah. Nice little back alley through here. Uh, it looks like it does have some kind of defense, you know, kind of this wall here. Uh, defenses against invaders. Let's just head up this ladder. Let's see what's up here. Yeah, another cool thing about Dornish houses is lots of them have flat roofs. So they've got these really cool roof terraces, great for barbecues and parties and that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> I don't really think uh, that was the thing back then. Cool. In this market, we've got again more exotic fruits. Looks like we've got some pomegranates, some lemons. I don't know what that is. That might be beans or something. Um, fish, more oranges, all that good stuff. Right. Um, and you can appreciate more of these, you know, beautiful Dornish textures that we've created. These mosaic tiles of blue and green. I think we've also got a red and yellow somewhere. Um, we'll probably find an example of that in the actual castle of Ghost Hill, which I think is over that way. So let's sneak our way through some alleyways. I feel like Aladdin in Agrabah. Just walking through these narrow passageways, stealing a loaf of bread to get by, you know. Um, we've also got these really beautiful, tall... Uh, I forget what they're called. I think they're called like palm pines or something like that. Really tall trees. These pine pine leaf blocks up at the top. Um, a really unique kind of style of tree which fits perfectly well uh, in Dorne. And um, yeah, another one of those little atmospheric details that we've decided to add in. And uh, it just looks great. And you can see again, I love the, the, the ground textures here. Lots of sand. Not just sand, but also sort of this uh, really bleached dirt look sort of yellowy dirt sand mixture um, which is great which we have uh, slabs and oh we don't have slabs of it actually I'm just noticing because we've got these sand slabs here but not these ones hmm. probably should add those in uh, we've also got these rocks and these dried sort of dried up shrubs here um, which is really cool actually before we go up there I just want to check one more house just so we get a good idea of the the lifestyle of the people of Ghost Hill um, kind of a basic bed here, kind of thatch, kind of boring, but I'm guessing it's pretty hot at night, so they probably don't really sheep, sleep under sheets or anything like that. Uh, and here we've got another basic dining area. Uh, oh, did not mean to do that. Um, and another little bedroom. Uh, I want to get onto the next floor. I wonder how you do that. I know lots of these Dornish houses have exterior staircases that go up to the next level. Um, here we go. So that's the next level up here. Looks like we've got sort of a little food preparation area. And a bedroom with a bunk, bunk bed and a little eating area. Very basic. I think that's the way it should be. I think I've been seeing lots of people kind of cram in all kinds of furniture just to make it look detailed. But really, what you need is the bare minimum. These people don't really have a lot of money. They kind of just want everything to be, you know, clean and functional and that's it. Um, I really love these banners uh, along our road here up to the castle. The green and yellow, which are the colors of House Toland. Um, and we'll get into that story, actually. So before uh, the conquest, 
uh, House Toland of Ghost Hill had a ghost on their sigil, but now they have a, a green dragon eating its own uh, on its own tail on a field of yellow. Uh, and as with all Dornish sigils, the sigil is round as opposed to uh, sort of a shield shape. And the reason they changed their sigil is because when Aegon tried to come down and uh, conquer Ghost Hill, um, he uh, was he sent out a champion, and Lord Toland at the time sent out his champion, and uh, Aegon killed the champion, but it was found out that the champion that Lord Toland sent was actually a fool, just a crazy fool that he sent, and uh, it gave uh, bought the Toland some time to escape, uh, so when Aegon came to Coast Hill, there was no one to conquer. Um, so that's sort of how uh, the Toland sort of got out of that. Uh, I just realized I should have opened this portcullis before I got here. Uh, I wonder if there's another way I can sneak in. Hmm, let's see. Let's pretend to be the attacker to this castle. See if we can find any flaws. This is a test I like to do with my castles um, and uh, on others, other people's castles as well, just to make sure that there's nowhere that people can sneak in. Because eventually, we will want people to man these castles and we'll have armies attacking them, that kind of thing. And when we get to the role-playing game aspect of the server, which, yes, will take a long time before you ask. It will be very long before we get to that aspect of the game. Um... But yeah, this wall seems pretty sturdy. I like sort of the detailing in there of the marble pillars and the plaster and stone in between. Again, you can see that really nice gradient with the darker stone on the bottom uh, moving up towards the lighter white stone, uh, which is what Ghost Hill is known for. And you can see some of the more details up there. I really love that tower up there. Oh, I think I might see an opening. Could that be an opening over there? Maybe. I'm going to head up see if I can get through that way. Oh no! <laughs> you see that? He's made it so that you can't jump up there, because it's two blocks high over here. Okay, well, uh, hmm. Wait, hang on. Nope, still can't go up that way. You know what? I'm gonna cheat. Haha! <laughs> I'm gonna go fix that later. I promise. Sorry, whoever's, whoever did that. I'm just going to cheat and jump in here. Sweet! And uh, now we are on the walls of Ghost Hill. Haha! <laughs> we've, we've, uh, intruded. Is that the word? We've, we've entered. We've broken into. The castle, the mighty fortress of Ghost Hill of House Toland. Um, but yeah, actually, that's all we know about um, the history of House Toland. They've probably been here for a long time. They're one of the main houses sworn to uh, the uh, Martells. And um, yeah, they're pretty cool. You know, I like them. I'd be friends with the, with the Tolands. I've got a cool castle. I'd feel pretty safe in here. Uh, nice big curtain wall uh, around this middle yard here. So actually, let's head down into that yard. That's the poor colors I couldn't get through. Very cool gate design as well. Love the flags, love the little towers and the turrets and stuff. Um, looks like, that looks like a little sept, actually. It's just sort of the shape of the sept, but I bet it's not. Oh my god, it is! I guess that's for visitors coming in, you know, praying to the crone. Thank you so much for making sure we got here safe and sound. That must be her there. Um, uh, yeah, um, so... Yeah, of course. Oh no, yeah, the... Uh, the uh, I always forget. The Dornish do sort of worship the... Seven. I think it's not maybe maybe not the main religion, but let's pretend the Tolans uh, are totally gung ho for that kind of thing. Um, right. I think this must be some sort of side entrance. So let's try this. Let's go in here. See a spiral staircase, and you and me both know that our final goal is going to be the rookery. So hopefully we'll find that and get to the highest point of the tower to give you a nice little uh, of, the, of the highest tower to give you a nice little overlook of the town and the beautiful sea. Um, let's see. This looks like the main entrance hall, the audience chamber. And I love this as well. Instead of sort of big thrones for the lords of the of the castles, we've decided to add these sort of just kind of comfortable cushions for them to sit down. That sort of weird yoga poses that they do. I love these stone screens as well, which is something we added um, for Dorne uh, specifically. Um, through here, it looks like we've got some busts of, of different lords and, and ladies. Uh, of the Tolans. Here we go. The Resistance of the Dragons. These must be the guys that fought off uh, the Targaryens over the years um, after their initial conquest. Um, right, so stairs. Let's head up these stairs. What do we got here? Out on the walls again. We don't want that. We want to keep going up. Right, beautiful carpets here against the colors of the Tolans. Oh yeah, of course they're not the Tyrell ships out in the harbor. They're Tolan ships. Uh, that is sometimes a bit confusing because there are lots of houses that have similar colors. It's because we can't really, you know, paint everyone's individual sigil on everything. Um, so yeah, but yeah, very cool. Um, I like this uh, marble flooring as well. 
the details, again, that sort of connected textures mod that we use, put two blocks next to each other, and their shape sort of changes accordingly. And uh, I kind of like that pattern, I don't think I've ever seen that before, that's very cool. Um, I've got some in here as well. Um, yeah, just very cool detailing for that marble kind of patterning that we see in the Reach and the Dorn as well, I guess. Uh, again, uh, this isn't very common in Dorn. We don't get all these white um, blocks in most Dornish castles, but um, I suppose Ghost Hill was a perfect excuse to do that. Um, so let's go through here. I'm curious to see what's in this sort of little tower out here. I'm guessing there's bed chambers. We've got some blue here. Must be from a, a different house nearby, perhaps a ward or a steward. Um, storage room in there. Another little bed chamber. Looks like maybe Martella colors up there. Uh, again, always important to look at the canopies on those beds. It will tell you sort of who's sleeping there or how noble they are or that kind of thing. Um, right. Let's get back to those stairs. Up at the stairs. Do 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 do. Ooh, there's two doors here. Looks like we've got another Toland chamber here, through here. Oh, again another Toland chamber, a nice little balcony looking out onto the deserts here, the deserts of dawn, facing south that must be. I'm definitely going to get lost now. <laughs> um, lots of bed chambers here actually, which is pretty good, you know, sometimes there's not really enough. There's another bust here, Lord Manfrey Toland III. Um, I wonder if there's crypts here, there probably are. I mean, Ghost Hill just kind of makes you think of, you know, like, ghosts flying around, the old ancient lords of, of Ghost Hill floating about, protecting their their great-great-great-grandchildren. Right, more bedchambers, come on. Oh, we've got a library in here, very cool. Uh, and a huge hearth, check that out. Very nice, nice sandstone hearth, very cool, big map of Westeros. And lots and lots and lots of books. That's a nice little view onto the castle there. Again, we've got those flat roofs. Just kind of typical. And I do love the um, the blue slate uh, accent work there and that little uh, gatehouse as well. That's pretty cool. I am a fan. I am a fan of this palette, definitely. I think um, when uh, the, the builder who built this um, came out with his original plans, we all thought, wow, that palette is going to be really ugly, but <laughs> uh, just kidding. We all thought it was going to be pretty good, and it, it did turn out really nice, so all very pleased about Ghost Hill. Uh, in fact, I think it did, um, a lot of other people did then want to uh, <laughs> do the same thing and have this kind of palette. We said, no, Ghost Hill must be uh, a special snowflake. Um, literally, it's all white and stuff. Alright, I think, I think we missed the rookery, but I'm gonna guess it's on this level because it was a library, and so there must be some kind of, hey, here we go, right, we've got nice little cages, little alcoves for the ravens, there's a little writing desk for the maester, and some cages here as well, some meat hanging, and there we go, nice beautiful little rookery with a wide open window to release them, you can sort of see out into the town down there, and the curtain wall outside goes till, right, so now I'm gonna head up again, up the stairs and find my way into that bell tower, um, the massive bell of Ghost Hill, to warn the town's people of potential raiders. Uh, there we are, find the ladder. Again, those beautiful mosaic tiles on the walls, and nice use of that. Beautiful big old bell there, and we've got these nice little platforms here. I wish more people built those, I usually have to find my way crawling out of windows somehow. Um, right, the town's gotta be down there somewhere. What's down there? There's like a secret tunnel. Hmm, I'm not gonna go down there, but I encourage you all to go investigate. Could be a nice little surprise, you never know. Oh, the town's down there, so why don't we hop Assassin's Creed style down there. Here we go. And all the way down there, down the misty fog of the coming off the sea, uh, would be the town where we started. So we've come a long way. Uh, it's a nice little picturesque build. I definitely encourage you to come check it out as well as the rest of Dorne. We've done quite a lot since my last video, actually, and the progress we've made on our new version of King's Landing has been massive, so come check it out. I believe we're just about to start work on the Dragon Pit, which is always an interesting part of any King's Landing build, because none of us really know exactly what it's supposed to look like. So come check that out, um, and I look forward to seeing you on the server, and I look forward to seeing you for... Uh, Ne next week's episode, which hopefully will be next week this time, uh, and that'll be episode 59. So thanks for watching, and see you next time.